Panzerwerfer 42 first went into production in April 1943 and was produced until March 1945. German army called for production of the vehicle in January 1942 and the vehicle saw its first tests on the front in the fall of 1943. The rocket launcher was on a chassis referred to as small tier, which means mule. Throughout the three years it was produced, 300 Panzerwerfers and 289 of its variant, the Munitionskraftwagen or ammunition car, were made. The Munitionskraftwagen was the exact same vehicle, just without the rocket launcher. It was mainly used for ammo resupply. The Panzerwerfer had a 150 mm 10 barrel rocket launcher, which traversed 270 degrees, could be elevated up to 80 degrees. It had a crew of three, a commander, who was also the driver, a radio operator and a gunner. The 150 mm launcher was not the only rocket launcher mounted on the Maltier chassis. The 24 rail Vielfachwerfer or multiple rocket launcher was also mounted on the vehicle. It used the same cupola base as the standard launcher, just with a smaller 80 mm launcher. This was the version used by SS units and not the Army's rocket launcher battalions. One unit was SS Warfare Brigade 506, which was equipped with 24 rail Vielfachwerfer, some mounted on French half truck chassis similar in shape and armoring to the Maltier. The Panzerwerfer saw action on both fronts seeing its first combat in Russia in late 1943. As to whether it saw action at Kursk, there is not enough solid information to support that, but it is very possible. There is some evidence that some early launcher prototypes were field tested in battles near Kursk, but that is based only on a few written accounts and there are no photos that show the vehicle there in real combat. The rocket launcher was used for larger scale rocket barrages against positions of Russian resistance where a large bombardment of big area would be more effective than more accurate artillery fire. The Panzerwerfer's rocket barrages covered much larger areas and added more psychological elements to the fight. The amount of noise, smoke, shrapnel and flying debris as the rocket hit and exploded was tremendous. The extensive use on the Eastern Front showed that this weapon could be employed effectively on the Western Front as well. When the Western Allies first went into action against the weapon after D-Day, they too would learn about the effects of the multiple rocket launcher. American intelligence before D-Day pointed to the use of rocket launchers such as the Nebel Warfare by the German army, but besides that they were overly unprepared for the effects of a mobile, armored, camouflaged and highly destructive rocket launcher mounted on a half-truck chassis. The British and Canadians were the first of the Western Allies to see the German rocket launchers in action against troop concentrations and Allied positions. The 7th Warfare Brigade was sent to Normandy after D-Day and on the 10th of June it arrived to the front. The next day the unit was about 10 kilometers from Cannes. The British were usually at the receiving end of the Panzerwerfer rockets in Normandy, but the 15 cm naval werfers were used in large numbers against American and Canadian troops throughout the whole summer of 1944. The Battle of the Bulge was the proverbial stomping ground of German armored rocket launchers during World War II. The most concentrated massed salvos were used in the Ardennes during the week of the German offensive. 
Rocket launchers saw extensive use during April and May of 1945, as the Russians were quickly advancing on Berlin. Panzerwerfers were used in large numbers defending positions inside Germany and close to Berlin as the Russians advanced from the east and the Americans from the west. The majority of these vehicles met their end at the hands of the approaching Russian army. The Panzerwerfer was a dangerous and destructive weapon, but it had many disadvantages that were obvious once you looked past the power of the weapon it was equipped with. The weight of the vehicle was its main disadvantage, as the chassis, armored body, rocket launcher, ammo, and an extra salvo of ammo brought the weight above 7 tons. Its speed on the road was about 40 km per hour, and off-road its top speed was only about 20 km per hour on reasonable terrain. Due to the weight of the vehicle, the climbing ability was minimal. Its ground clearance was only about a foot, which made traversing tough terrain much more of a challenge than if it was a fully tracked vehicle. This was its advantage in operating in Russia, as the naturally flat terrain was the vehicle's advantage. The rocket the launcher used had only one disadvantage, which was the range. The effective range for a Panzerwerfer's rocket was about 6000 meters. In Normandy, it was an example of an ineffectiveness of mass bombardment weapon. A large portion of the salvos fired at troop concentrations missed their mark by hundreds or even thousands of feet. The weapon caused more chaos than mass casualties. Combat tactics usually called for a group of three to six vehicles to mass fire on a specified position, but on many occasions crews operated from different locations but within the same firing range to reach a predetermined target. Very few Panzerwerfers that were captured by the Allies were captured in any quantity. Photographs of the vehicle taken by German photographers generally showed groups of vehicles at staging areas, usually loading the launcher with rockets, in preparation for an attack. <laughs>